For tonight's video, what we're going to do is just take a look at a couple extra properties that we haven't looked at yet in class. Um, basically, the reflexive property, the symmetric property, and the transitive property. So the reflexive property is one that we're going to actually use quite a bit this year when we start writing our proofs. And the reflexive property says, basically, for any geometric figure, A is going to equal A. So A could be an angle, so angle A could equal angle A. or angle A is congruent to angle A. It could also be for a side. So we might have something like side AB is congruent to side AB. So basically, the reflexive property just says that anything is equal to itself. The symmetric property is one that we probably won't use too often. Symmetric property um, is basically about the order of things. So if we have, if we're told that A is congruent to B, we can also say that B is congruent to A. So really all that the symmetric property does is switch the order. Transitive property is another one that we're going to use quite a bit. Um, transitive property of congruence basically says that if A is congruent to B and B is congruent to C, then A has to be congruent to C. So if we follow this, if A, thing 1, is congruent to B, thing 2, and B, thing 2, is congruent to C, thing 3, then thing 1 is going to be congruent to thing 3. So basically, if this thing is equal to that, and that thing is equal to this, then those two have to be equal also. So really what we have here are just three equal parts, and so we're just kind of saying that things are equal. This is similar to substitution. Now, other reasons that we can use for proofs, um, tomorrow when we start writing proofs, you'll see that for everything that you write down, for every statement that you write down, you need a reason. Um, and so some of these properties are reasons for proofs. So you could say that something's true because of the reflexive property, or you could say that something's true because of the transitive property or the symmetric property. Um, other reasons that you can give are definitions. So you could use like the definition of midpoint as a reason. Um, and really, you could use algebraic properties or other postulates or ideas that we've talked about so far or we will talk about, um, and same thing with theorems, like we're going to talk a little bit more about tomorrow. Um, so really, these things are just things that you can use as your reasons when you go ahead and write a proof. All right, so let's take a look at, at actually writing a proof. Um, for a two-column proof, you're going to have two columns. You're going to have a column for your statements. These are things that you know that are true and reasons, and this is why you know things are true. So in this proof, we have the measure of angle 1 is 45 degrees, and then the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 1. Those are our given statements. Those are the things that are there to help us out, kind of the clues like we talked about a little bit. And then there's something that they want us to prove, which is that angle 2 is equal to angle 45 or sorry, angle 2 is equal to 45 degrees. So just about any proof you write, you're going to start off with your givens. We're going to say that angle 1 is equal to 45 degrees, and the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 1. All right, And those are my first two statements. And for every statement that I write down, I have to give a reason. And the reason that I know those two things are true is because they were given to me. They were part of the givens. Now, if we look at those two statements, if angle 1 is equal to 45 degrees and angle 1 is equal to angle 2, then angle 2 has to be equal to 45 degrees. That's that transitive property that we just talked about. So I can say that the measure of angle 2 is 45 degrees, and my reason for that would be the transitive property. All right, so down at the bottom of the page is one more proof, very similar to the one that we just did. So go ahead and try that one and see what you come up with. All right, on the back of that paper, I'm going to do um, one more with you. With this proof, it says that the measure of angle A is 90 degrees, and angle A is equal to angle Z, or congruent to angle Z. So again, I have my given statements. Those are my clues. And what I want to try to do is prove that angle Z is a right angle. Well, if angle A is 90 degrees, and angle A is equal to angle Z, then using the transitive property, angle Z is going to be 90 degrees. If angle Z is 90 degrees, then it's going to be a right angle. That's our definition of a right angle. So again, I'm going to start with my givens. The measure of angle A is 90 degrees. 
and angle A is congruent to angle Z. And again, I need a reason for everything. So both of those were given. And now looking at those two statements, I can see that angle Z is going to equal 90 degrees, and that's just using the transitive property. And if angle Z is 90 degrees, then angle Z is a right angle, and that's what I know about a right angle. That's my definition of a right angle. If an angle is 90 degrees, then it's a right angle. And so we've done it. We started off with the givens. We used the givens to give us a little bit of a clue, and we finished off with what they want us to prove, and along the way we gave a reason for every single statement. And that's it. That's your proof. All right, so down below there are two more. See if you can try one of those and um, come up with a proof for, for writing one of those. And we'll take a look at it tomorrow.